The new Ready or Not DLC adds some much needed new content into the game, but from the lack of commander mode missions, some generic guns, technical problems, and minimal gameplay changes, the DLC is a little weird to me. First, let's talk about the maps. The maps are easily the single best part of this DLC by far. The whole premise of the DLC is that there was a Category 5 hurricane that has devastated the city of Los Sueños. As a result, waves of crime have washed over the city and you, the player, have to deal with them. There are only three maps to play, each being some form of household and being in the aftermath of the hurricane. Honestly, you can play through them quite quickly, but more maps are always better than nothing. An excellent bonus about the maps is the fact that anyone can play through the multiplayer as long as the person hosting the game has the DLC. I mean credit to Void Interactive here. Almost every game could do this in some way as to prevent the communities from being separated into DLC versus no DLC. It can also help people get into the game. Maybe you own the DLC, but your friend doesn't as he just bought the game. Now you both can hop into a lobby and he gets to experience the DLC with you. Someone getting to try the DLC content without buying it and then lead to potential future sales if they are impressed and they want more. The problem is with this DLC is you really don't get much more if you actually spend the money. The maps themselves are each unique and provide a different twist. It genuinely feels like each map was a bit of experiment by the devs, trying to branch out of their standard map design and trying out different styles and vibes. To explain what I mean, I really want to just break down each of the maps and what they offer. The first map, Dorms, is an abandoned dormitory that has become refuge for homeless individuals. The building was already in bad shape, but the storm caused more damage to the point that the building might collapse. The whole thing is super dilapidated and flooded with water. When playing, you definitely get the feeling that this building is quite old and damaged. The map itself is aesthetically pleasing, but the gameplay is, well, unique to say the least. The map is this weird three-lane design, but it kind of makes sense considering it was an original dormitory. There's a long hallway down the center filled with debris and junk, and on the sides, there are dozens of rooms, each being a little bit different and unique. This essentially repeats itself on the second floor, with some slight variations. The twist, though, on this map is all the small gaps and holes in the walls that the suspects can traverse through. This isn't a new mechanic, of course, but it's never been used to this degree or amount, with the only exception maybe being that one mission where you hunt down the guy in the ghillie suit. The problem is, this is the map's main downfall to me. The layout, combined with the gaps themselves, are kind of interesting and provide altering gameplay from round to round, but the sheer amount of the holes in the walls hurts more than it helps to me. The entire hole-in-the-wall traversing system for the suspects sounds good on paper as it allows them to be unpredictable and present a constant danger to the team. You never know if they can claw through a hole and now they'll be behind you. In reality though, I feel that it highlights the clunky movement system as it allows suspects to run around the maps in seconds while I walk slower than grandma. That's how I feel about the map. It's not bad and I would consider it better than a lot of the other base game maps but there's no other way to describe it than meh. The second map, Lawmaker, is a large mansion invaded by some generic goon bad guys. Some important guy was taken hostage and you're tasked to go in and save him and his family. The scenario and backstory itself is probably my favorite as it hasn't been explored that much in the game. Sure, there are hostage rescue type missions, but having to go into the house and save the family is something I wish there was more in the game. Visually though, the map is pretty, but feels sparse. The environmental storytelling is there in places, but it seems that this map was either too big to handle or not enough time was spent giving it the life that the other maps really have. Some places around the map feel too clean, while others just not really feeling finished or populated with unique details. I'm not a level designer, but compared to the other maps in the game, I would say it needs a couple more passes to give it more character. Gameplay wise, the mission is pretty smooth. I'm not sure if it's placebo, but it felt like the AI on this map took way more hostages than any other map I've played, although I haven't played the other maps that much since this new update. If it's not placebo, then it fits the story very well and emphasizes that the suspects are there to take hostages and emphasizes the player's goal to save the citizens. Overall, I just feel that the map is too big and grand and would be better if it was a tiny bit smaller with more character in each spot. It just felt like most of the map was empty, both AI-wise and being interesting. The map's not horrible, but out of the three in the DLC, I would say this one needs the most work. And that brings us to the third map, Narcos, which is my favorite. It's essentially a whole neighborhood of houses filled with gang members breaking into houses and ready to fight the cops. 
The story behind the mission is that an informant inside the gang has been found out, and you're going in to help him. The gang members have used the destruction and chaos of the hurricane to force their way into houses and cause further mayhem. It's perfect house-to-house -house fighting through backyards, and I think it's one of the coolest things in Ready or Not so far. But that doesn't mean it's perfect though. The main problem with this map is how empty some of the houses can feel. Don't get me wrong, there shouldn't be a gunman or a civilian behind every door, but at points it felt like I didn't even want to search some of the houses. Instead, I just found myself chasing down gang members through fences and yards rather than searching door to door. I don't really have a solution for this as I don't even know what the main problem really is, as the AI felt like they spawned pretty evenly through the map and there weren't points that had way more AI than others. But it was just something I noticed while playing. Something else I noticed is that the main objective of finding the informant can be slightly random. The map itself is pretty linear, and no matter what, he's still on the opposite side of the map from where you spawn, but he can be in slightly different locations. For example, on my first mission, I found him at the front door of the last house, crying out in pain, begging for help. But on another time, I found him outside of that same house, crawling around on the floor, claiming that he was a cop and needed help. The environmental storytelling on this map is really excellent. Finding the informant's secret room and his torture site at the beginning of the map, and following the destruction throughout until you find him was a cool experience. Overall, it's just my favorite map out of the three. While the maps are the center of the DLC, I really don't think they justify the DLC really existing in the current state. To me, DLC should be expansions of the base game. The Home Invasion DLC feels more like a minor content drop that should have been free. The fact that these missions have a bunch of story behind them, but are not implemented at all into the single player story mode is really weird. To further this, you don't even have to own the DLC to play the maps. Again, I do think this is a good thing, but it feels like there's no point in buying the DLC since you can play since the only way you can play them is through multiplayer or the single player practice mode. And if you're already playing the multiplayer, you don't even need to own the DLC anyways. On top of that, the guns that were introduced with this DLC are free to everyone, which again isn't a bad thing, but it just makes you feel like a sucker for buying the DLC as half the content isn't exclusive. The clothes are the only real exclusive item in the DLC, and while they're good, they could have also been free content and not a DLC. To be fair, $10 really isn't that much, and I don't feel like I was scammed in any way as I got the fun out of the game and the missions themselves. On the other hand though, if they had just added the missions to the commander mode, the DLC would feel significantly better to me. If that was the case, you'd be buying an actual expansion to the commander mode and not just the ability to host three maps on multiplayer while wearing a couple new shirts and helmets. I know I kind of brought this up earlier, but I want to talk about how little content there is with the DLC. Firstly, I know it's hard to make new content and how disproportionate it is to the amount of time it takes to create something rather than how much time it takes to consume it. But the fact remains that this still feels like a small content drop to me to keep players engaged rather than a full new expansion to the game. Something that I've heard and read in community reviews and discussions that I actually agree with and hadn't really thought of until now is the addition of old and unreleased content into the game to keep players happy. There were so many old maps that have been completely removed from the game. I understand that maybe they didn't fit in with the story or needed reworks, but they could still be introduced as free content drops into the practice and multiplayer modes like this DLC's missions. The DLC missions should be additions to the story while free content drops could be added for multiplayer and practice mode missions. Additionally, there's dozens of unreleased guns that have been in the game for the past couple of years that aren't used. Sure, they probably need minor development on animations and textures, but I would think that that was a lot easier to add those than create something from scratch. If they want to keep players interested and happy playing the game, then they should honestly slowly add that type of stuff into the game that they've already spent a lot of time developing in the prior years and just finish them up and throw them into the game. More content, especially content that was once in the game and players know and usually like, wouldn't be a bad thing to add that stuff for free, just as minor content drops. I really don't think this DLC is terrible or significantly overpriced, but it just feels a little unfinished or released for the sake of making a quick few bucks. The content is not bad on its own, but there are just weird elements that make this DLC feel weird. Again, no commander mode for the missions, three guns that just aren't interesting, and a few pieces of decent clothing don't add much to the gameplay. The underlying issue I have with this game 
that makes the DLC feel so bad is the development cycle. The game simply feels left behind by the devs after the 1.0 update, and this DLC feels like a way to add some minor content while making some good money in the process. I'm not trying to say that the devs are money hungry who hate their game or anything like that. It just feels weird that the game gets no real updates to the months, not even minor technical things, but they want me to spend $10 to play three maps in practice mode while wearing some new clothing. I really don't want this to be the future of Ready or Not, where players wait months to get a minor update along with a moderately priced DLC for a couple maps and clothes. That's the main reason I wanted to make this video, as I really do like this game, but the practice of this DLC is weirding me out and I just needed to express my opinions. The last thing I just want to briefly discuss is the technical update that came out with the DLC and the subsequent problems caused by the new release. Alongside the DLC, there was a minor update that changed a few things. The main thing is that they ported the game to Unreal Engine 5. This has caused major FPS problems for many players, myself included. Patch notes also claimed that the AI had received a couple updates, but in my playtime I noticed no difference. The default AI is still Terminators, wanting to kill every SWAT member no matter what. I do think that these technical problems can be fixed over time, especially the FPS issues, as players are going to complain about that and the devs, I feel like, will be forced into fixing it. But I'm also kind of worried that they're only going to fix what is necessary before focusing on their next DLC and this whole process repeats itself. For now, only time will tell. In my opinion, mods are currently the only saving grace for the game. Oh, and by the way, all the mods broke because of the update. Oops. So, literally while recording this voiceover, a patch for the Neo DLC released. I quickly just want to talk about it, as they claim to have worked on performance and talked about how in the future they plan to bring the DLC maps into commander mode. All of my original complaints kind of still stand, as the fact that this was released in the state it was is still very weird to me. And I hope this can be a learning experience moving forward as I'm pretty sure they have more DLC planned and the future DLC need to go a lot smoother than this, at least in my opinion. Other than that, I don't think the patch really covered much more. As far as I've read, patch 1 is just based on performance, which I kind of figured would be coming out anyways, as performance is always something that players will complain about until it's fixed. For now, we still have to wait for patch 2 to see how they implement the DLC maps into the commander mode, but at least they claim that they're going to be doing that in the future. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.